I'm Abe Clements, and I'll be, I and Eric Gustafsson will be presenting Hallucinator firmware rehosting through abstraction layer emulation. Both Eric and I worked on this work uh, equally. If you think about the Internet of Things, we have millions of devices that we use throughout our lives that are interconnected and vulnerable. Vulnerabilities in these systems uh, can compromise, uh, cause compromise, compromise private information, uh, destroy equipment, and disrupt our daily lives. If you look inside of these Internet of Things devices, you'll find a bunch of microcontrollers running uh, firmware. A subset of this firmware is bare metal firmware, where everything is compiled into a single monolithic binary that runs directly on the hardware and accesses uh, all of the hardware through direct memory reads and writes. So it has raw hardware access. If you compare that to like a Linux system where you have a bunch of different sections within your binary and kernel abstractions that are used for hardware interaction, we know very little so if we want to assess bare metal firmware, uh, the options that we have currently have are to look at hardware. So we can tear apart the hardware to get debug access, do dynamic analysis using that debugger. However, for security reasons, this should be disabled. And if it is present, it's very limited, maybe a handful of breakpoints. The dependency on the hardware also limits parallelism. We can only run as many instances as physical devices that we have. Other limitations to this approach are its cost, can be hundreds to tens of thousands of do dollars per device and they're brittle, it could be easily break. So what about rehosting? So rehosting is the process of taking firmware from an embedded system and running it on an emulator on your desktop. Well, this can, this, this can provide scaling. Uh, however, rehosting firmware is a challenging problem and Hallucinator's goal is to enable scalable firmware rehosting without requiring specialized hardware. Peripherals are the biggest problem to enabling uh, scalable rehosting of firmware. We currently have a QMU, which is a CPU emulator that enables us to execute the instruction sets of CPUs and hands a handful of peripherals. However, if you look at a modern microcontroller like the one on the left, it has 20 to 30 different peripherals that it can access and interact with. And the firmware, by being bare metal, directly accesses all these peripherals and will not operate without them. And that's just a single device. If we look at Mouser, a common electronics distributor, it lists for over 44,000 different microcontrollers that they have available for sale today across 35 different data sheets, which kind of represents the number of product families. So there's still a great amount of diversity between its devices and across 26 different manufacturers. So when we look at trying to scalably rehost firmware, the primarily challenge is that without peripherals, bare metal firmware won't run. In fact, in our evaluation, we found that most of our firmware would only execute eight basic blocks if we didn't provide support for peripherals. And then there are tens of thousands of peripherals and combinations thereof that any given that firmware needs to use to operate. So how can we scalably rehost firmware? If we look at the way developers develop their software, we get an, uh, a, a clue. So developers and manufacturers of microcontrollers put out software, uh, software development kits and hardware abstraction libraries within them to ease, imp ease implementation. This includes like device drivers that abstract away the level details of buses and hard different peripherals. And these, ha are, these hardware abstraction libraries are everywhere. Uh, so NXP, STM, Atmail all provide it. Uh, SDKs and hardware abstraction libraries, and those are also embedded inside common operating systems like Riot, Adreno, and FreeRTOS. Hallucinator leverages these hardware abstraction layers uh, and enables replacing them during rehosting with high-level implementations, and this enables us to transform the problem of rehosting firmware from supporting thousands of different devices or peripherals to dozens of HALs. If we look a little more closely at the firmware, we again have this binary monolithic uh, bare metal firmware. But to the developer, it looks more like this, where they have their application code, middleware, middleware libraries, uh, hardware, hardware abstraction libraries, and then the hardware. Rehosting, what we do is we replace those hardware abstraction libraries with higher level implementations, we replace the hardware with QMU, uh, system emulator. And this enables us to decouple the upper layers of the firmware from the hardware. We can also replace the middleware with higher level replacements and run just the application code. And this is what Hallucinator does. Through our implementation, we take the firmware, run it through a tool that we created called libmatch, which takes the hardware abstraction library source code and produces a list of the function addresses within that firmware for the functions within that uh, abstraction library. We then implement a series of handlers, which provide interact 
provide low level replacements for interacting with those functions to peripheral models, which model the behavior of the different types of devices, which are then all connected through an IO server, which centralizes the control of all the external peripherals. And this enables us to execute firmware on a generic CPU emulator without having to implement the tens of thousands of different peripherals. I'll quickly go through a handler and then refer you to the paper for more details on our peripheral models and IO server. This is an example of a handler. It's written in Python. And you can see that we're replacing the I2C read buffer function. So when that function gets called with another firmware, it will execute this Python code, which first reads out the location of the buffer and its length. And then we just check to make sure that it's uh, valid. And then we retrieve from the model the data to be written back into the firmware, which is then written back in on the last line of the example. I'll now hand it off to Eric to describe libmatch in our evaluation. So in order to actually locate the hardware abstraction layers and libraries in the binary, we developed a tool called libmatch, which uses binary analysis to find function names. First, we obtain the SDK files from the vendor. And we use these uh, with the content matching described by previous work to obtain some direct matches for the content. However, along with this, we get some number of collisions where the function's content was indistinguishable from one another, yet they perform different functionality. In order to solve this, uh, libmatch utilizes context provided by the SDKs themselves in order to look at the callers and then the callees of these collided functions uh, to disambiguate them and turn them into correct matches. By the same token, we can examine cases where we can infer what the names of other functions should be, even when we can't match their content, such as if they've been customized by the application vendor. Through all of these techniques, we can obtain a much larger set of correctly matched functions using libmatch. Of course, once we have a completed system, we can take it out fuzzing. We built a fuzzing-oriented variant of Hallucinator called HalFuzz based on the AFL Unicorn framework. Along with doing this, we had to solve a lot of interesting problems that come with fuzzing firmware, such as when does the program terminate, what to do about non-determinism from timers and interrupts, and of course, crash detection. And you can read all about this in the paper. To evaluate Hallucinator, we obtained 16 firmware samples from three vendors um, whose functionality involved a, a variety of different hardware. Uh, among these were these bolded ones here, which use network-related functionality and are therefore interesting for an attacker. First, let's examine the performance of libmatch. As you can see from this table here, uh, the context features used by libmatch not only allow us to obtain a higher rate of ma uh, correct matches and a lower rate of collisions, but they also allow for up to 10% more uh, names than we would otherwise have using this context related features. In order to evaluate the ease of use of Hallucinator, we examined the uh, effort required to implement the handlers needed to rehost those 16 firmware samples. And we, and we did this by dividing them into three categories. Trivial, meaning it, the handler does nothing or returns a constant. Translating, which is also very simple, where the handler collects the arguments passed to that function by the firmware, operates on one of our predefined models, and then returns some result. And finally, internal logic, where in order to implement the handler, you needed some piece of knowledge that was not contained in the SDK's documentation. In doing this, we noticed that over 85% of the handlers we needed to implement required little effort, meaning they were in the first two easiest categories. Uh, the remaining, uh, uh, handlers that were uh, required uh, internal logic were those where the hardware abstraction layer wasn't a very good abstraction layer, such as uh, hardware specific details were involved, or it used an internal feature of the SDK, such as its own memory allocator that was required for correct functionality. So of course, once we have a completed system, we can take it out fuzzing. So we took those network related firmware samples and we fuzz them with real parallel AFL. And because we have fully decoupled the hardware from the firmware, we can scale this as much as we want, meaning we uh, were able to utilize hundreds of millions of parallel executions. Uh, 
and we did find some crashes. Uh, we crashed the STM uh, STPLC uh, PLC kit, and we crashed Atmel's HTTP server and mesh network related firmware samples. Interestingly, we fuzzed the HTTP server firmware twice. Once where we rehosted based on the lowest level uh, hardware abstraction layer and found one set of bugs or single bug. And in the other where we, we rehosted uh, using everything but the application code, and we found a different bug. This shows that this multi-level approach allows you to focus on the, uh, the areas of the firmware that you want to find bugs in. Uh, the, two, the two bugs we found in the Contiki real-time operating system were in fact uh, previously unknown, and therefore we obtained CVE numbers for them. We disclosed these to the vendor, and they have since been fixed. Last year, we had the opportunity to take Hallucinator to a hacking competition uh, at last year's uh, Seesaw Embedded Systems Challenge, where we were tasked with solving challenges on this hardware board here uh, in order to obtain points. Uh, of course, naturally, we rehosted the firmware running on this board, which gave us uh, unusually powerful debugging capabilities, uh, allowing us to solve all of the firmware-related challenges and, and take home first place. And finally, this concludes our talk. Hallucinator eliminates the implementation of tens of thousands of peripherals by instead focusing on the dozens of HALs. You can find the source code for Hallucinator, HalFuzz, and LiveMatch at the GitHub links here. And of course, these artifacts passed artifact evaluation. Thank you very much for your time.